everybody. Uh, good morning. Yes, it's good morning. Uh, my name is Jim Lee. I am co-publisher of DC Entertainment, but I also draw comic books in my spare time. So, yes, thank you. Um, so oh, I, we started this program last year, and I, and I did some kind of quick how-to tutorials, like how to draw Batman's face, how to draw more dynamic figures. Uh, yesterday, I, I spent some time talking about how to draw better hands, right? And uh, I thought it was super interesting, but my wife told me afterwards that it was boring. And so, uh, yeah, I know. Uh, she's my worst critic. So I thought I would try to do something a little more entertaining today without repeating myself. Um, so I'm going to talk a little about Aquaman. It just so happens. Uh, so I want to do a little thing on Aquaman. I kind of walk you through the process of how I conceptualize a panel and then how it ultimately uh, comes to fruition. Hopefully I can do this. So, so I have this initial idea that I had while walking over here. This is how much time I prep for this. Uh, and so I had this very simple idea. And if you really think about comic books, it's really just taking an image to tell a story and all the other stuff, like the rendering and the uh, perspective and the anatomy, that's all kind of almost secondary to the central idea, which is what are you trying to convey through a picture? What kind of, what are you trying to communicate? So I had this idea, very, uh, Inspired by Sergio Aragonés, who I saw a lot of last night. Uh, okay, so let's start with. Sometimes it start with the important stuff. Right. Yeah, I think that's the gist of it. <laughs> right, so if you ever uh, follow myself on Twitter, like uh, at Jimlee.com or whatever. I will uh, oftentimes post uh, layouts, and th they basically just start like this. And I figure that's enough information for the uh, the writer, if we're running short on time, to look at this and be able to put, you know, that's not working. Come on, keep it clean. Anyway, so so that's essentially the important parts of it. Now I'm going to take this basic concept and kind of bring it to life. So, I will move to the next stage, which is, uh, I take a very kind of blunt pencil, this is an HB lead, I believe, and again, it's, it's what's called a gesture drawing, and it's just basically what I did there before, but in pencil form. And you can see kind of moving circles, and you're not really drawing from the fingertips, it's more kind of from the elbow and shoulder, and that's to free you up so that you're not obsessing about little details just yet. You just want to make sure you get round shapes, and that shape really conveys uh, energy and movement. And, um, so it's almost like if you've ever seen concept drawings of cars, they just kind of keep repeating these kind of same lines. If you've ever seen uh, what's that guy, the, the guy with the fro that used to paint uh, Bob? Bob Ross. Oh, yeah, so awesome. <laughs> I used to watch that kid like, oh, happy lives. Yeah. <laughs> That's really kind of it. It's very, this is very therapeutic, and it's just, it's almost like you've got a play of nothingness, and you're just throwing it down, and you're just kind of creating shapes. Right? I don't even know if this will work because his feet can stick out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pretend there's a wave there. Okay, so then, you, once you have something like that, now you can start breaking up the actual shapes into something. Usually, I usually start with the head, and because it's a slight down shot, the, the horizon line is here, right? And we know it's here because it's a straight line. If it were, if we were looking down on the horizon line, you guys all know that we would see waves like this, right? Right. That's that's the views. And if it were underneath, you would see underneath. Hard to do with the drawing. Anyway. So the horizon line's right there, which makes it easy to do perspective. But but since he's under the water, we're, we're looking down on top of Aquaman. So I usually do the head, and then right off right off that head, I, I, I put the shoulder, because that's where the shoulders are, right next to the head. And I just start defining uh, silhouettes, right? Here's the tricky part. So this chest area has to be this kind of uh, large jelly bean, jelly bean shape, like that. And then the, 
the trunks are kind of circular, and then you have these like elongated footballs, ham hocks, and then feet. Right? And it's really important to get the curvature of the spine. That's probably the most important line right there, like that line that I just hit. Right? Because that's that. The back, and then it gets that really sexy part of the lower back. You guys are all familiar with that. <laughs> right back out, and that's. Yeah. Anyway, all right. Now, the thing with the arm, you'll notice that um, a lot of people will draw arms, and if you do a very realistic arm, you'll kind of like do a very kind of uh, soft. Uh, I don't know how realistic this is. Uh, you can kind of see. Take a photograph and you trace someone's arm. It'll, it'll look something like that. And some people construct their arms by basically doing this kind of thing, right? But I don't like that because it, hey, this looks very soft, and I don't like the silhouette. And this looks almost like it, they're like uh, they don't have. There's not, not not a looseness to the figure. It's not as dynamic as it could be. So you actually have these little interconnecting parts in your body. I don't know what the names are because no one has ever uh, identified them, but they basically separate out these shapes and allow things to bend. So you have your, your shoulder part here, you have your bicep, but then you also have this kind of weird thing right there, and after that comes your, your forearm. And then you have this weird thing which is the wrist, that's the one we're all familiar with. And so and there's like almost a weird thing, so it kind of comes in and back out, and that kind of stuff. So you can already see I'm stretching it out, it feels a little more member. And then, because I don't like that soft silhouette, that's, that's, if you look at comic books from the 50s and 60s, that's generally how they drew the figures. They tend to be kind of softer. They used a brush, which uh, also kind of heightened that. Um, and I like that because it looks realistic, because there's another way you can do an arm, which is simply this. This is a very uh, animated kind of arm, right? Right, so super realistic, super stylized. Uh, this is constructed but lacks some of the dynamicism that you would want. So take all these kind of things and think about it. And so I kind of meld it all together. And so when I do an arm, I will come in and um, I'll have a round shape, but then I'll have like a straight shape next to it. And then a round shape. And then maybe opposing it, I'll have a straight shape like that. So I have a mix of this kind of graphical representation. But I also retain some of the softness. So what you're seeing is a nice edge or silhouette, but at the same time I got that kind of pseudo-realism that you get by adding those very kind of soft shapes. And I add these like little connective areas here, and that allows the form to kind of spread out and feel a little more limber, right? Okay. So you got Aquaman's arm here. It's round shape, straight shape. Uh, straight shapes, I'm going to do a round shape opposed to that. Your tricep is uh, its always, if it's flexed all the time, it would look like that, right? Elbow in here, forearm, whatever. This is if you're lifting a weight. But because he's more relaxed, I'm going to go with this kind of almost uh, round shape because it's not flexed, right? Any of you guys work out? I'm at the wrong place to ask that question. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Hey. Okay. All right, okay, so. Uh, anyway, so you got that. You got that little, just like how this little area here is the lower back and it hits this mountain that is the, uh, the Luteus Maximus. And you have, you can carve out this little shape here and that's just suggest the elbow. The elbow kind of hides underneath that muscle there. You have your wrist. And then you have, your, you have your hands, and rather than the hands being in the same plane as the forearm, I'm just gonna like lower them. It's a very kind of comic book -y convention. I don't know if anyone does this when they're diving. Try it, <laughs> you know, you dive like that. But it, this looks more dynamic because again, I'm breaking, I'm creating a more interesting silhouette, right? You know what the silhouette is, right? It's the outside line that, that governs the illustration. Yeah. Right, so it makes him look like he's diving with purpose. More super heroic. And then uh, the same way this line is critical, this line is super important here, and that's the lat, that's the muscle that goes out to the sides, and out of those drop the, uh, the rib cage. In the same way, with, I did this with the elbow, the kneecap, essentially does the same thing. 
I'm just going to replicate the tricep kind of thing here. And then with that line here, which replicates that. And so uh, the legs are almost kind of like inverted uh, arms. Maybe. I don't know. Now the head kind of feels a little squished in there, so I'm going to, again, the same way I pulled out this forearm from the bicep area, the same way I pulled this hand out from the forearm with this extended wrist, I'm going to probably do the same thing with the neck. And it, it's not super realistic, but again, it, it makes the figure look like it's stretching and moving on the page. And that's really critical, especially when you're drawing superhero comics. You want the characters to feel like they're actually moving on the page, and you can do that by stretching them out. If you stretch them too far, they look really grotesque and broken, but if you pull it just a little bit, you get a nice bit of tension in the figure. And now since he's swimming through the water, the water is kind of playing with his lovely hair. It is nice, lovely arts. Channel Bob Ross again. You should find you know, these incredible videos on, on YouTube. Bob Ross. I highly recommend he paints, but he does these like happy clouds and uh, angry mountains. And I just, it's, it, I, I, I used to watch it all the time as a kid, and I, I think about it a lot. Uh, and then here's the line that's, that covers where the eyes are going to be. This is the nose, this is the mouth. You guys all know the head is like an, is an egg shape. Right. Well, I, I have a classic basketball in that shape, but uh, you can go, most people have that oval and just kind of like do the uh, the lines across, usually like thirds or quarters, the half way point is the nose, quarter point is the eyes, quarter point down here is the mouth, right? So there, that's that's Aquaman. And then you got to connect this, you got to draw through, so if this is his neck, and that neck is a big collar, like this, right? And then this is the arm slots. And that, that's that weird kind of extended uh, jelly bean. And there's his spine, right? So you got those slots, and then you got the lat muscle, and then the little muscles up and down here like that. Well, that's a cool gas mask, actually. Right? So, um, <laughs> so let's just draw a gas mask, and then turn it like this, and you got uh, Aquaman. Anyway, uh, you sometimes. sometimes you draw what you want by drawing something different. I don't know. Okay, so let's do that. All right, so, all right, so I've got that. I've got that pretty blocked out. I'm going to have to make these a little taller than they would be just for the sake of this joke. Bring those, uh, right? <clears throat> Alright, so then I've got this person in the water. And uh, the inner tube here. And uh, this is the forearm, same thing, same sort of shape, but part of it's covered up by the inner tube, right? So I'm giving that subtle suggestion that that arm is resting over, but then kind of behind. Alright? That's where that silhouette is super critical. And then because this is in perspective, right behind this chunk, you're not going to see much of it, and you're gonna, but you will see the shoulder, which is bigger on a superhero, and it'll pop up, just like that. And then when you rack, when you are uh, surprised or scared, you, your head naturally recedes backward, it, it, it comes backwards, so, and it kind of goes up at an angle like this, so. And then the same set of uh, things like that, and then the chest comes out. I did hands yesterday, so I'm going to quickly do it, and you guys kind of have to find it on YouTube to see how I got to this point. So, uh, all right, so then we, we have that gas mask that we're going to draw right here. All right, so that's his chest, or that person's chest. There's that connective tissue, which is the abdomen, and then you have the pelvis. And actually, you know what? I mentioned this before, but it's worth uh, repeating. Really, the if you can draw this, and you can draw that, right, and you put that spine like right here, All right, so these are the important parts of the body, but they move left and right to create more dynamic figures as you kind of extend out. So this, this person, that torso is here, the pelvis is over here, and then the legs are going to come up. It's a natural fright reaction 
you kind of pull in. <laughs> but now I'm going to quandary because he's in the foreground, this person is in the middle ground. I want to create as much depth on a page as possible because ultimately you're looking at a two-dimensional drawing and I'm trying to create the illusion of three-dimensionality, of depth. And uh, the best way to create depth, right, is uh, you have an illustration, you have a mountain. You can do that, but this maybe creates more depth, right? Anytime you have that kind of nice overlap, okay? So it'd be great, I have some overlap, but it'd be great if I can kind of finish through. And so his leg would nor normally not be that long, and it would kind of be hidden by the thing, but I'm just gonna give him fins. <laughs> right? All right, this is the kind of problem solving <laughs> you do on the fly. Uh, that's why I encourage you, I wanna to go to college, because this is what they teach you, think on the fly. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm almost there. I don't know if I like this so much. Maybe the head should go back through. I don't know. How does Sergio make it look so easy? Anyway, uh, <laughs> so I'm, I, I think I've got it. So, how much time we got? What time, uh, what time is it? Uh, I got probably another 10, 15 minutes? All right. So now I'm gonna start inking. And normally, look, I, I would, I'm just a penciler, so I actually go in and lightly erase I don't usually use this eraser because it kind of leaves pink stains on the paper, but that's what I've got. And I use a sharper mechanical pencil. Here's one. So normally, uh, look, uh, people ask me like, oh, what tools do I use? You can buy these at any uh, Aaron Brothers art store. Micron, there are, they come in all these different sizes, 0 0.8, 0 0.5, 0 0.005, this is super fine. It's a archival link. It's supposed to last a long time. And then uh, mechanical pencils you can buy at CVS, you can buy them at uh, the Office Depot. This one is a 0.4 millimeter, 0.4 millimeter lead. You can buy this in Japan, so you're kind of SOL on that one. But uh, in the bigger cities, I hear that you can find Japanese import stores and they sell that and the lead. So what's great about 0.4 is that it gives you a thinner line than 0.5, duh. And uh, uh, but. 0.3s are super fine, but they break a lot under pressure, so it's nice to um, have something that gives you a crisp line without breaking constantly. So I kind of lightly erase it like that to the point where I can't see it, but it's there. And I honestly think it's there just to give me some confidence as I go into it that I'm working with a net, a safety net underneath me. I'm not going to draw this straight without any of this underdrawing. But it would be very nerve-wracking. It would be like literally walking a tightrope without knowing, you know, without knowing if you're going to fall in any second. But now I know that if I fall, I still have something to fall back onto, and I can erase and kind of go back to my original structure underneath. I also know that my forms are relatively correct, and um, that I've composed it so that I've got my negative space here, and I've got the overlapping to create some depth, and all these other wonderful things. And and, and this is the kind of stuff I never did as a kid, and it was because I had no discipline. And I thought I knew better than anyone else. I thought I'd just start drawing here and finish up over here. But I really recommend anyone that's really thinking about art to spend the extra time doing this because this really is the work. Everything else I can do while watching football games on TV and uh, you know making phone calls. That's not true. Um, but anyway, so uh, but it's, it is a different mindset because this was the construction and the conceptual stuff, and now this is about technique and making sure my proportions are correct and making sure the lines are in the right place and uh, all these other things I didn't think about when I was doing the initial part of it. I usually start either with the hair or the uh, eyes. And you can see I'm still kind of moving. I'm, I'm trying to keep it free, and if you notice, I still get like thick and thin lines, right? This is slightly thicker than this. This is very wispy right here. And again, that is to create more movement in the art, all right? So this art is where a page in a comic book gets shrunk down 60% and everything gets demagnified. Uh, the power, the energy of the drawing is lost in that translation when you guys get it in a comic book form. So the more energy you can put in the lines, so if you look at original art, the lines are much bolder and there's a lot more variance in, in the lines and that's all designed to uh, it's almost like stage makeup, right? If you ever go to a play, they wear a lot more heavy makeup than you would in real life, unless you're, you know, heavy. so, uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I shouldn't go there. Anyway, so, uh, and that's done so that people can see it clearly from a distance. Okay. 
so you see I'm still following the forms. There's that line that I know is in there. And I, you know, I only uh, erase parts of it that I'm going to work on. I don't do the whole thing because then I'll forget. So I kind of just erase a little bit and it's loaded into my short-term memory so I know what's underneath there. And then I kind of go back in here like that. So and then the nose, and sometimes I just draw the shadow of the nose there, div it the thing. Right. And that goes up. The ear's got to be over here. So a lot of this is just uh, the whole game, like the ear bone. There's no ear bone. The ear bone's connected to the <laughs> jaw bone, to the eye bone, and, uh, and then the temple bone right here, and then the side bone to the right here. And, uh, so. and since he's moving this way, the, the hair is kind of getting dragged by the water. The water's kind of pulling his hair. And, uh, and then, because he's underwater, even though he doesn't need to breathe, I, I always give him bubbles, I'm not quite sure. Because uh, you know what, it sells the premise of movement and also makes it look like he's actually underwater. And then I, I'm actually going to put him everywhere. Right, so then, uh, so, you, so I, I will basically go through and do this. And uh, I don't go this fast at home. Um, it, it's more like... This <laughs> was super dull to watch in real time, so I'm gonna go like, and I don't know why I draw this much faster here than at home. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's this. I'm playing a video game at the same time. I'm not sure. So, uh, let's see, like this, like this. So, there's a lot of this kind of thing that constantly moving. And I don't do the scales right now because, again, I, I just really want the, the forms. That arm looks too short to me, so I'm gonna basically go in and elongate it out to here. I want it to be about here. And so everything's got to kind of move forward a little bit. And right? So now I've got construction. I've got my sharper lines. You can kind of see it coming into focus. If I were going to just fully pencil this, I would do this tedious thing. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> this is the, my, my least favorite part of, of uh, yeah, I know, Scott as well, of, of the Justice League of Aquaman. Um, I liked it better when it was just, you could just do this. This was the cipher back in the 60s. It was awesome, right? <laughs> if we're going to go back in time to do that, no. You guys now are so spoiled that you need every single... Not every little friggin' scale, but the shadow underneath it. And some of you guys even demand that it's three-dimensional, that it actually is like a coin. And that now I gotta put another line here, and then here, and then I gotta make sure they don't line up like this, because that looks re retarded. So I gotta make sure that, I'm sorry, it doesn't look right. And then, it, so I gotta offset it. And it, this is why I hate drawing Spider-Man. It's the exact same thing. It's, it's, Aquaman is my Spider-Man, it's the worst. <laughs> right? Look at that. Oh my god. <laughs> so, so that's, that's Aquaman. And oh uh, my gosh, time travels fast. Okay, so so now I will go in and uh, I'm just going to ink it so that you guys can see what it looks like. So, uh, so now here I'll actually go in and do like the edge. And uh, you don't actually have to draw your scale. I mean, this is, you can just kind of do this, suggest it, and you put it where the shadows would be, right? This little, right? Yeah. I'm just going to go with her because she's the 
the one that's art directing this at this point. <laughs> you could be editor of great material at this point, I guess. So that looks a little bit better. All right, so. If you notice, like with the mob, it's certainly at this size scale. I'm not going to go and actually draw the line. You can actually suggest the shadow and the, and the uh, piece of the mouth and the other part that's in shadow. And there's a lot you can just do by just dropping little dits and dats, as, as we call them technically. So, especially with a pen this, this uh, thick, you're not going to be able to really go in and add that kind of detail. If you wanted, you could take a much thinner pen, like uh, a point one and uh, do some of this stuff here. Right. Now that head looks too big, I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I actually do that. I will carve off sections like this. And uh, so there's always constantly things you can do. All right. bigger the neck comes down here so that this has got to come down here. I got a long it's almost like I gotta increase the size of everything. Everything's kind of in place. Fixing a 
cuts in these lines. Now, normally, I, I just pencil, so a lot of what you're seeing, I would just be doing with an eraser and redrawing that line as needed. That's what I think. It's got the buckle, buckle. Much better balls than this. this is as good as it gets right now. And a lot of times, uh, I, was, I, I would really um, advise you guys to take your drawing and kind of look at it backwards through the light so you can see it in reverse. You see that? In reverse. Mm -hmm. And you can see if things are, yeah, right there. See that? Mm -hmm. Right, so now it looks like someone else drew it, and I go like, oh. It's okay, <laughs> so I, I, there's all sorts of problems, right? All right. Let's get off the stage. Anyway, so, uh, it's, it's all right. It's all right. Anyway. <laughs> um, so you do this, and uh, I would, I, I constantly kind of do this as I'm drawing to see how it looks. Uh, reversing the light, and then I kind of finish it off because I've got no time. Uh... <laughs> 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 Alright, so there you go. Anyway, so uh, there you go. That's my uh, tutorial.